This is the Swiss Army Knife of the battery world. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So a few weeks ago, Rob, KK6JNI, left a post on the forums recommending I check out this battery bank and this cable. And I'll show you why this cable is important here in just a second. But let's talk first about the battery bank. This is uh, made by Easy Longer, and it's got uh, an output of 22.5 watts at its peak. Uh, input on it is 18 watts. Uh, it's got two USB-A ports on it. I'm going to hold this up here so you guys can hopefully see that. Uh, there's two USB-A ports uh, that are for output. There's one USB-C port for input and output. And there's one micro USB for input. Now, when we're using the USB-C uh, for output, we can get 5 volts and 3 amps. We can get 9 volts and 2.2 amps. Or we can get 12 volts at 1.5 amps. And the total capacity of this pack is 26,000 800 milliamp and I'll leave links to it down in the description below in case you're interested in any of these items but what I did was I took it and wanted to see if we could use it to charge different devices now this particular cable that he recommended comes with USB-C on one end of it and a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter, I believe, uh, barrel connector on the other end. The cool thing about this charger is it makes this battery bank put out roughly 12 volts. It actually shows about 11.9 volts when uh, you plug it up to the battery bank. Uh, but it basically tricks this battery bank into putting out the 12 volts uh, for devices that don't have the power delivery system built in that automatically work with this battery bank. So what I did first was I connected it up to the 705 with the standard HT battery on the back of it. I ran the battery completely dead and started charging it with this setup. And when it was fully charged, I had 75% left in this battery bank. So I could recharge that battery probably close to four times before I ran out of juice. Now the next test I wanted to run was charging the Yaesu FT5 HT. For that, you're going to need a little adapter. Let's see if that will focus, focus, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, I'll leave a link to this little adapter down below, but it plugs right onto the end of this cable and gives you the right size for Yaesu HTs. So I went ahead and with a standard battery that I ran completely dead on the FT5, I plugged this thing up and left it for a while to let it charge. When it was done, I had 56% left in the battery bank after fully charging that uh, standard battery. Next, I wanted to go ahead though and try it with the new big battery uh, pack that I got for the FT5. This is a battery pack offered by W0AEZ and the battery pack includes two 18650 batteries inside. It's also USB-C rechargeable. After that battery was run completely dead, I plugged up the battery bank, and once it was fully charged, I had 39% left in the battery. So that's pretty impressive. I wouldn't get two charges out of that, but that's a massive battery pack that will run the FT5 for right around 24 hours, even when it's beaconing APRS on a regular basis. Now the next test I wanted to run, and I just wanted to verify that it would charge, so I didn't run the laptop completely dead, but I did use this cable without the adapter, obviously, and plugged it up to the Evolve laptop, and sure enough, this battery bank will charge the Evolve laptop. Now I'm not sure exactly how much uh, it would put in that battery because like I said, I didn't run that one completely dead and then try to charge it all the way back up, but maybe we'll do that test in another video. 
Now, the next test I wanted to run was connecting this up to a Raspberry Pi Zero. I use a Zero for my portable DigiPeter kit that I'll be using during an exercise this coming weekend. And sure enough, this powered it without any issues whatsoever. And I would guess that it would probably power that thing for at least uh, 12 hours, if not more, uh, just running the Raspberry Pi off of it. Finally, I wanted to figure out how I was going to recharge this if I was in the field. So I grabbed my RockPals 60 watt panel and connected the battery up to the USB-C port on the uh, solar panel and then plugged the other end of it into this battery. I didn't time that, but it did bring the battery back to full charge in probably three, maybe four hours. Uh, if I had to guess. It was kind of one of those days where it was some sun, some clouds. I just stuck it out there and honestly forgot about it. But when I went back to check on the battery bank, it was fully charged. A couple of things before we wrap this up. While I didn't test it for this video, this battery bank will recharge any of the new uh, radios that will take USB-C charging, like this Redivus radio that I recently tested on the channel. Side note, guys, this is really, really a cool HT. If you didn't see the video on that, you should definitely go back and check it out. I believe the thumbnail says something about a water torture test. Another thing, this cable is the 12 volt variety. They also make this in a 9 volt, a 15 volt, and a 20 volt. Now, the battery bank will not put out the 15 or 20 volts. It tops out at 12, but there are other battery banks out there that will put out 15 and 20 volts with the power delivery system system. So what if you have a radio other than one of the Yaesu radios like the FT5 or the FT70? Well, it depends. Uh, here's a charging base for a Baofeng UV5R. This particular uh, input is 10 volts uh, and its output is 8.4. So probably couldn't use that uh, 9 volt variety of this cable to charge this. But all you need to do is take the base for your HT, flip it over and read the specs on that and see exactly what your HT needs uh, to charge with. If it happens to be 9 volts, well, you could get the 9 volt variety of this particular cable uh, or the 12 volt if your radio will take 12 volts for its input as the charge. But all you got to do is flip that base over and it should tell you exactly what you need. So now you can understand why I call this thing a Swiss Army knife of the battery world. It's capable of charging quite a few things in my system. And it's not only this battery. Any battery that will give you that power delivery out would do the same thing. But this cable definitely is worth the money, giving you that 5.5 millimeter barrel connector and then this adapter to charge the Yaesu HTs. I've actually already ordered a second one of these batteries to put in another one of my kits. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.